The last Minecraft hacked episode was not well received because apparently I talked about three different hacks that already existed. Pretty lame. Well, let's talk about it. In Germany, we would say, ich mach meine Ansage. So here's part one about the reach hack. I teased the existence of the reach hack without revealing how it works because I thought it's something new. Well, apparently the reach hack is already known and called TP Aura or Infinite Aura. And several people in the comments were exactly right about how it works. The reach is basically just a neat trick and it simply involves teleporting to the target, hitting it and teleporting back. This is what took me 14 hours to figure out myself. I know I'm an idiot that it took me this long. Anyway, let me walk you through what happens when I hit the sheep here. When I click my button to attack the sheep, I first send a player move packet which contains the coordinates I want to be at and I place myself close to the sheep. But you have to be careful. This distance from my old position to the new one is the maximum teleport distance the server allows. Anything further and the player move packet would be rejected and the server sends back a synchronized player position packet to basically reset the position back. All right, we teleport forward. But we can increase the reach to hit the sheep even further if we calculate how far we can be away from the sheep to still hit it and then factor that in. So after I send the position update to this position, I can send a player interact entity packet which says I want to attack this entity, this sheep. And right after the attack, I send another player move packet to put myself back to where I came from. And because I sent these packets directly using a client connection in Vokamix and to access the send immediately packet function, you don't see anything. I sent the packets in the background, so in the game it just looks normal. Pretty neat. Also, other players don't see you teleporting either. That's because of the tick rate of the server. While we might send a lot of movement packets per tick, the server only updates the position to the other player once per tick or so. So while we send teleport forward, attack and teleport back, all the player will see is the player is here and oh, the sheep got attacked. Yeah, it's really that simple, but it took me a while to figure it out. And even worse, I was only able to attack the sheep from this distance. Actually, it took an embarrassingly additional amount of time to figure out how to attack mobs from even further away. The solution, it's so obvious that I really don't know why it took me this long. What do you need to do to attack from even further away? Simply send more movement packets in between. I think it took me so long because I completely overcomplicated the issue. I was looking for logic bugs and other issues while I just had to use the packets and movements as it is. Anyway, to get larger reach distance, you can send player move, player move, player move, player move, always with the max amount of distance that the server allows. You need to research in the code how far that is again. I think it's like something between eight to 10 blocks per movement packet or so. Anyway, then we hit the mob and teleport backwards with player move, player move, player move, and player move, done. You can basically do this in one tick. So again, other players probably don't see you teleporting at all. And it just looks like you hit somebody from far away. Now, implementation of this is a bit tricky. The code can get pretty ugly. Your game constantly sends these player move packets and when you send your teleports for the reach attack and in the middle comes a normal move packet, the teleport distances are messed up and the server resets your position. Also, anti-fly kicks are something you need to think about. When you execute reach upwards, you might miss your anti-fly bypass packet and get kicked. So it takes a lot of programming effort and thinking of all the different cases in order to implement something robust. My implementation is not that good and fails a lot. But here is in general the code. So when I have a target entity that I want to attack, I call teleport from two, which calculates how many packets we need to get there and then send the position update packets. After that, we do the attack, followed by another teleport from two backwards to the original player position. Anyway, all of that took me a lot of time. I'm really not the smartest hacker. I can be very slow when it comes to stuff like this, but I still figured it out myself. And that is what really matters to me. So I'm actually glad I didn't know this is really a technique implemented by hacked clients. And that is what is fun to me. And that's how I learn new stuff. I want to figure it out myself. So let me show you the sheep challenge I built. Here, for example, is 7H3 with a club mate in the hand. And I'm very disappointed that they do not use my amazing resource pack. Anyway, they sacrifice the Mate to the enchantment table. A sheep appears far away, 
hits it with reach and completed it. Cool. But can we talk about something else for a moment? Why the F is this called TP Aura or Infinite Aura and not Reach Hack, Remote Attack or Teleport Attack? TP Aura, Infinite Aura? Who comes up with dumb names like that? What's wrong with all of you hacked client script kiddies? Anyway, speaking of Reach, maybe what you don't know is there is an even more advanced teleport reach hack out there because the basic method we just talked about where we teleport in steps to the target breaks when there is an obstacle in the way. When your line of sight, for example, contains a tree and we try to teleport into that tree, we get our position reset. So how is it possible that some player on the server can sit inside a house far away and attack players in the spawn hole surrounded by lots of blocks? Well, I can tell you this much, it is a variation of the TP based reach, but it uses a few more tricks. So for this, I created another challenge. Come with me, I show you. Just behind the trees here, there it's hidden. This is the vault. This is a big cube of bedrock and it contains a small room storing something valuable. There is no way to enter it. Any teleport attempts into it will fail. Here, I tried to change my teleport distance, attempting to teleport inside. It doesn't work. You cannot send a position update this far into the cube. It's too far. Or is it? Well, if it's impossible, how can it be that some players can press the button on the outside and then moments later press the button on the inside, stealing my valuable secrets? Well, actually, I don't know myself. I have no clue, really. I stared at the code for many hours and tried to figure it out. And I don't know. I have no clue. But at the vault, I told them, if you try to steal my secrets, I will steal and expose yours. I'm serious. You have been warned. So what's the conclusion? Yes, the reach hack was already known. You were right. But that doesn't matter. Who of you actually looked into the code and implemented it yourself? This is exactly like downloading a Minecraft build versus designing something yourself. So I ask you, do you want to do Minecraft hacking or just Minecraft cheating? Anyway, let's come to the community showcase. Today we have Enderkill98. Fun fact, he is the player with the most mined cobblestone on the server by far because he was very busy clearing lava casts from some kiddies. So, take it away. Hello, my name is Linus, I'm from Germany. My in-game name is Enderkill98 and this is a showcase of my very first mod I made to join the server, which I misword. Uh, as you can see here, I have a fabric installation with mostly vanilla tweaks. Um, this is my mod list. Notable mods that are not tweaks but more like hacks are X-Ray, and Entity Outliner, so that I do not myself, otherwise all hacks are self-made. My hack interface is mostly just like text in the top left, just rendered into the in-game HUD. That is my layout. It's rendered into this class, like using the in-game HUD, into the random method, and then just, I think it accesses like a drawstring with shadow. That's the basic thing. Uh, otherwise, those are the hacks I have made for now. A uh, clip like detects a uh, barricade, tries to teleport behind it. Mostly useful for V clip only. Oh uh, yeah, fly free cam stuff. Uh, free cam, for example, if I first exit fly and then just um, activate it, I can go out below. It's basically like a spectator mode, but I can also like place a block if I select it beforehand. I can go here, place it. So that works. For the next mod, the basic one is fly. I did a second iteration, it's kinda nice to use. Default speed is 1x, I can hold my keybind and press left or right mouse button to change the speed. Or I can press sprint and get like 6 times the speed. Useful for traveling, back and forth to spawn for example. Yeah, that is basic fly. Uh, no fall for example is pretty simple, it like, cancels my velocity, you can see like my fall being a bit janky, but it's pretty reliable. If I am going full swaddle into the ground, it usually functions. Sometimes it fails, but pretty rarely. For the next mod, auto plant is pretty simple. If I'm going to just destroy a bunch, and if, uh, if I'm going to get a bit more seeds, and now press like the hotkey for it, it will just do it automatically in a certain range. Then the next mod. Ah oh yeah, the shortcuts, uh, 
the basic interface is yeah, the text and also I've added keybinds for it. It's a simple API you can add for Fabric and those are basically all my keybinds I have. Also one thing I have like uh, uh, the, uh, someone showed off some nice exploit like he could like reach infinity basically. I had an idea for the concept. Mine is not as good as his. It's not the same, but I have a pretty far reach. I think like 150 blocks and I can just enable it. And if I'm now hitting him, you can hear. Uh, I amplify the sounds. It works. If I'm now going a bit above, still 108, still 126. So it's pretty far range. I also can focus on someone. So if I now you see like in the top left it's focused on the player. If I for example now look away it will still hit the person as you can hear. Uh, my solution for the fountain challenge, the first attempt was a pretty slow one. Like it was, ba it was basically this mode, like super slow going down and in. That is how I became a hacker. However I improved it a bit. It's not super reliable but it's mostly working. Depending on the ping, I guess, it's sometimes not lagging as much not or more. And I can do that pretty quickly. Also, I can speed it up a bit. It's a bit more risky, but it seems to work right now. And yeah, that works pretty well. Of course, if I turn it off and move now, I'm above again. That should be my mod showcase. I will include a few shots of me killing things if needed. And yeah, that should be it, I guess.